Hey, Evergreen. Good morning, Evergreen. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I'll say rejoice. There we go. That works, doesn't it? Yeah. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I'll say rejoice. Amen. Um, so I'm excited about today. Uh, and I'm actually excited about what we've been focusing in on. Mm -hmm. We've been focusing on the Spirit-led life. And when you welcome the Holy Spirit into your life, the Holy Spirit moves. Uh, on Wednesdays, you know, regardless of how many people listen to that or watch that, I, we're being inspired by that. And mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is moving in our lives. And we're finding these confirmations. The confirmations occur with... I'll prepare something, and Pastor Dan will prepare something, or Josiah prepared something last week, and we, we find a commonality that the Spirit of the Lord mm -hmm. giving us one message, or yeah. a better message, uh, it, where we're like, ah, that, that's what you're trying to say, Lord. Yeah. And uh, today's another one of those as well. Uh, I, I've prepared a message, and uh, I'll probably preach it on some level, but uh, Pastor Dan sent us a video that I just think is a prophetic mm -hmm. word from the Lord, just a... Um, radiated with my heart is radiated the right word yeah. I don't know. It, it's not the right word resonated is it? resonated and then radiated yeah Can it work that sure. way it resonated in my heart and then radiated and so i want us to um i want you to look forward to that because god is going to speak Amen. to us through and god will speak through us if we open our hearts in the now that's one of the things in the now uh that i believe every moment as we gather together is an opportunity for the divine to interact with our lives, for and God I like, to interact with I us. like that you actually said radiated and resonated, um, because when you talked about the message becoming um, more full, more complete, um, as we hear from other voices, other disciples, other pastors and leaders, um, that we're all disciples. We're all disciples in the Lord. And that reminded me of even hearing um, from women in women's Bible study and some of you who have sent me notes or texts or have contacted um, us that we, we get to hear the word from you. We get to hear about how God has been speaking to you and how the Holy Spirit has been um, informing your heart. And that creates in us and in you and in everyone as that radiates out as something resonates with our heart and we share it and we, we come together um, virtually or in person and phone calls. And, and we interact with one another in the word that really does get to radiate mm. out and gets to encourage one another. And the message becomes more full. It doesn't change because God's word is holy and true and complete, but the message and the, the personal aspect of what the Holy Spirit is speaking to us becomes more full and more complete even. I want you even now as we're together to practice living in the eternal now in that mm -hmm. we practice right now to believe that God is speaking and moving. We know, why does the scripture have power? You say, well, it's the word of God. Well, actually, it doesn't just have power because the word of God, because some people can pick up the scripture and when they pick it up, they can just kind of look at it and like, I don't care about this bunch of foolishness and set it aside. Or they can read it with a snarling, like, uh, I don't agree with mm -hmm. this and just look for things to pick apart. Yeah. They won't discover much from the scripture in that. If you read it by faith, believing that God is speaking to you through those words, uh, suddenly the kingdom of God advances. And that's mm -hmm. not just true in the scripture, but as we are full of the Holy Spirit, there are times when you open yourself mm -hmm. up to someone else and you must, if you're going to grow, you cannot just, I'm going to isolate in myself and figure my life out. It's not good for man or woman to be alone. We, by faith, open ourselves up to the voice of God in someone else. We open ourselves up mm -hmm. to the presence of God in the community of God. Mm -hmm. And that can happen right now. Right now, you can open yourself up to that. And we do that as a practice as well. We intentionally put ourselves in positions to open ourselves up. That when you send an email or you send a text and you send it based on the leading of the Lord, mm -hmm. then we listen like, mm -hmm. Lord, is this you speaking to me? And we can find the encouragement of God. The kingdom of God can actually advance in our lives through someone being a vessel of God's words. Amen. So as we worship, that's why we worship. That's mm -hmm. why, uh, you know, I know some of you are tuned in later, late with this, and I'm probably not even talking to those people because they haven't tuned in yet. <laughs> but I really want you to be here the whole time because God has given a word at the beginning. Hasn't he? Yes, he has. And I want you to have those opportunities to encounter God's presence because there's a lot of things we're encountering that are not edifying, that are not building us up. Even our own thoughts aren't mm -hmm. necessarily building ourselves up. Mm -hmm. So we need to practice that, the intentionality of believing that every moment during the service is an opportunity for God to inspire me, to Amen. speak to me, to connect with me. And every opportunity we have in our exchanges, in our emails, in our texts, however we express ourselves to each other, we have the ability to connect with God 
God and to connect with each Amen. other. So let's keep that focus as we go into worship. Amen. I'm so thankful for the worship team uh, and their willingness to serve us. I heard that Rudy, uh, you know, because of social distancing, uh, R Rudy is often with the worship team. He hasn't been able to do that mm -hmm. with the Bozichs. Well, he in his own home will play mm -hmm. worship along with him. So he plays his guitar and sings yeah. along. So that's the kind of spirit we can have. You can play your instrument at home. You can sing at home, but believe that there are many of us singing together and believing as we sing together, the spirit of the Lord comes, that God makes actually his presence known to mm -hmm. us mm -hmm. but it is a surrender of our will so mm -hmm. enough preaching doug i'm kind of in that aren't I? okay let's go mm -hmm. and uh let's sing unto the lord
church. Uh, happy Sunday. Uh, well, we're on Saturday, but happy Sunday to you. Um, as we might have mentioned, um, part of the internship that I'm doing here with Evergreen is I am in charge of leading worship once a month. Um, and a part of that is picking the songs that we'll do. That's actually most of what I think it is to lead worship on Sunday, is to pick the songs. Um, and whenever I do that, um, my typical way of just picking songs is what has God been impressing on me during the week? Um, and this has been a very, a very busy week. If you're not aware, um, this one and I are getting married in three Woo! weeks, um, <laughs> which is rapidly approaching. Woo um, and there's been a lot of planning, a lot of a lot of things, and there's been a lot of excitement and a whole lot of stress. Um, and it's pretty much taken every every moment of the day. Like, other than the internship work that we're doing, this is what we're doing in the day is wedding planning. Um, I think something that's been really impressed on my heart in this time is amidst both the excitement and the stress, there's room for God. And even there's a tendency to, maybe on some days when I'm in the stressed moments, I can get to remembering God, but in the excited moments, I'm off flying away and I don't, I don't think much about him or vice versa. I'm doing really happy and I'm just like, man, praise God, thank God for this. And then when things start getting more stressful, I'm just like, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know what to do. Um, and so, as I was thinking about it, I've just been reminded that all of this, all of this is nothing compared to God. Yeah. And all of this can be surrendered to God, and all yes. this yes. should be surrendered to God. And that's kind of what I <clears throat> looked at when I picked these songs this week, is we need to remember that whatever is going in our lives, if that's something very exciting, if that's something really stressful, or if that's something lukewarm, God is worthy of praise. Mm -hmm. Raising a hallelujah in the midst of the victory, in the midst of the battle, in the midst of the mediocrity. Mm -hmm. And remembering that it all centers around Christ. Mm -hmm. For God so loved the world, he loved the world in this manner, that he would give his only son, again so that all who believe in him shall not perish but have eternal life that I do. though these things may pass though they may, may be struck down in this life there will be hope in an eternal life spent with him Amen. so Amen. let's continue to worship God as we sing for your glory Amen
Lord. Thank you, Lord. May we continually look to you as our cornerstone this mm -hmm. week, God. May I remember that all of human history hinges on that cornerstone. Yes. And all of our lives hinge on that cornerstone. Mm -hmm. Individually and corporate, it's all about Christ. Mm -hmm. Lord, you came and you changed us. Mm -hmm. Help us remember that. All this can fade away. Mm -hmm. We can receive a thousand blessings and a thousand curses, but the greatest blessing will remain, and that is you. Yes, mm -hmm. Lord. Let us continue to cling to you, to remember you, to offer of ourselves to you this week. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for who you are. Yes, Lord. Who you're making us. Yes, who you're Lord. making me. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you for this grace, for this life. We give it all to you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 You have a good week. Love you all. Bye, love Bye. you, miss you. Bye. Bye. Okay, Evergreen, sorry to break in here, but we had recorded the whole service before I had listened to worship, and I got to break in and say a couple of things. One, uh, congratulations to Josiah and Janine uh, announcing their wedding. I had to mention that. And then also, we've got special music for you. And uh, after this music, it's going to be a recording where it looks like I didn't even listen to it or care about it but that's because I recorded that before I heard the special music we have a Joseph and Maria with just a beautiful special music for us so we're gonna listen to that and uh, thanks for letting me break in with all this awkwardness but I just couldn't have it look like I didn't remotely care about the great marriage news and also this beautiful special music so I'm back to the service Holy cow, I just had to break in again. 
thank you, Joseph and Maria, for that amazing special music. Love you guys dearly. Now uh, I'm going to send it to Jen and uh, Doug. Praise God. Yeah. Um, by the way, I said I'm going to keep things, you know, bare bones, not talk about extraneous things. You can't. But I do not. need to acknowledge. Oh, yeah. I look at haircut. that. Nice. I lost a pound of hair. <laughs> I cut my hair twice on my own. And then it was like, uh, thank you that we opened up <laughs> the haircutting places with appropriate distancing measures in place. You so, have some amazing stylists and yes. they do do a much better job than you do. <laughs> as do. good as your attempts were. I actually gave them uh, in a tip, a double tip. I'd encourage you with that, with especially small yeah. businesses that are opening up. And if you did things at home that you normally would have spent there, like maybe give some money towards that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just to bless them. Uh, so speaking of uh, COVID-19 related things, haircuts and such, we want to give you an update. Pastor Dan is going to send out an email to the church with a more uh, clear update or, or maybe more maybe detailed, the, maybe, maybe the same yeah. update. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> I presume it'll be clear, but Dan's pretty clear. Uh, and so he'll be sending it out this week and make sure you look at those emails when he sends them out. Uh, but the, the biggest thing is we've been in contact with the junior achievement, uh, not the building, the people who run the building, mm -hmm. it's just a building, and the people who run that organization, Junior Achievement, uh, they're in all kinds of transition right now. They have new leadership. They're trying to figure out how to exist in that building. They're trying to figure out how to deal with some new regulations that are even coming out here. And so everything for them is very much in a state of we're just trying to mm -hmm. figure out what to do best. Uh, they are trying to decide, for instance, one right now, they're not meeting in there. Uh, no one's meeting in there. No programs are meeting in there. And even for their own staff, they're not having like more than 10 people in there. So all this, they've been very welcoming with us, but mm -hmm. we're processing things yeah. with them. And it's going to be a slow process. Mm -hmm. And for us, we're going to go at the pace of relationship. So there's yeah. no news in, no news in, new news in that, except for the fact that we're meeting with them. They're meeting with us. They're letting mm -hmm. us, even insurance issues. They have to figure out insurance liability cleaning the place, mm -hmm. all those things. So just pray, yeah. pray for them. And what we want you to do is pray for junior achievement. We know that nothing can mm -hmm. separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So if you have some sort of future where you think your faith is going to collapse or succeed based on when we get back into that building, I want to dissuade you of that notion because God will not allow that to happen. Mm -hmm. God will not allow your faith or evergreen church or anything that's important and eternal to crumble yeah. based on something like this. Yeah. We can be afraid, mm -hmm. we can be concerned, mm -hmm. but we need to know what is certain. So just continue to pray. We'll send out more emails on that. And we'll let I you do, know more information. What I do feel really thankful about, and I'm just praising the Lord for, is how um, relational the folks from Junior Achievement have been with mm -hmm. us and that we feel like very much that they are for us. Yes. They are not against any kind of, you know, moving forward together. And I just really appreciate that spirit. And that's where I really do think we need to pray for them as an organization mm -hmm. um, and as an institution and just look forward to continued relationship with them, you know, and as things safely allow to be able to, you know, in, in time, it's get so back good. in the building and that relationship, we as evergreen can press into relationship. There's nothing preventing us from having relationship with one another right now. Amen. Uh, this is a time, you, some of you have been praying, Lord, I want to be able to witness you. I want to mm. be able to express you to others. I want people to know Christ. Mm. COVID-19 is a wonderful opportunity for Christians to show what it's like to be Christ-like, mm. to show what it means to serve, to mm -hmm. show what it means to prefer others above themselves. This is a wonderful opportunity. Mm. And that's what we're doing with uh, Junior Achievement. And they're frankly, doing that in return. Yeah. It's a, a mutual thing here. Yeah. We're all just trying to discern what is best. Yeah. And we're trusting that God is going to be good regardless. Amen? amen. Can I get an amen? So you didn't say amen. Can you say amen? Amen? Okay. Amen. All right. This is what we're going to do. Pastor Dan sent us, it's, I think it's like 11 minute video, but it feels like uh, 30 minutes in the sense of it's just a powerful word from God. Mm -hmm. And so I want us to listen to that. Here's the message and we'll, we'll listen to the end and afterwards we'll just kind of respond to it with some sort of prayer. But the Lord has a message through Dan with a, with a complicated area of scripture, frankly, that some of us avoid that he has just brought to us or the Holy Spirit has brought to us with great life. Mm -hmm. So let's do that and listen to Pastor Dan. Yes, I'm in my car. Uh, why wouldn't I be, right? Let me read you something this morning. Um, I hope I can read this clearly. I hope you can hear me clearly. This is from 1 Kings. One day as Jeroboam was leaving Jerusalem, the prophet Ahijah from Shiloh met him along the way. 
Ahijah was wearing a new cloak, and the two of them were standing alone in a field. Ahijah took hold of the new cloak he was wearing and tore it into twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take for yourself ten of these pieces, for this is what Yahweh, the God of Israel, says. I am about to tear this kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and I will give you ten tribes. I will leave one tribe for the sake of my servant David and for the sake of Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel. For Solomon has abandoned me and worshipped Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Sidonians, and Chemosh, the god of Moab, and Moloch, the god of the Ammonites. He has not followed my ways nor done what is pleasing in my sight. He has not obeyed my laws and decrees as his father David did. But I will not take the entire kingdom from Solomon at this time. For the sake of my servant David, the one whom I have chosen, who obeyed my laws and decrees, I will keep Solomon as leader for the rest of his life. But I will take the kingdom away from his son and give ten tribes to you. His son will keep one tribe so that the descendants of David, my servant, will continue to reign, shining like a lamp in Jerusalem, the city I have chosen to be the place of my name. I will place you on the throne of Israel, and you will rule over all that your heart desires. And if you listen to what I tell you and follow my ways and do what I consider to be right, if you obey my laws and decrees as my servant David did, then I will be with you always. I will establish an enduring dynasty for you as I did for David, and I will give you all of Israel. Because of Solomon's sin, I will punish the descendants of David, though not forever." Uh, this is the preface of the divided kingdom of Israel, um, a seemingly, or at least in my opinion, a seemingly neglected portion of our Old Testament history. Um, neglected may be a strong word, but I say that because you can't find a lot of information out there or a lot of study out there that goes much beyond um, supplemental material like uh, charts and graphs and maps and territories and descendants and successions and... Um, there just there isn't a lot of material of that more complicated or more nuanced uh, experience of say maybe like the average Jewish family that it gets caught up as collateral damage in um, the David Solomon a superpower that is Israel um, on its eve of collapse. Uh, the divided kingdom of Israel is more than just a, a line drawn in the sand separating uh, ten tribes in the north and two tribes in the south and uh, good kings versus bad kings. I think it's much more complicated than that or much more nuanced than that. And um, I guess I think of it this way. Instead of like a one singular uh, crack in the glass, it's, it's like a, a rock that hits the window of your car and it, sh it, it splinters or fractures in a thousand ways. It's, it's fractures upon fractures upon fractures upon divisions and it's just this spider web of, of chaos. And I think about that because in, in some ways it's much like um, how we live today or, or the climate that we live in today. I'm trying to be careful here because I don't want to draw like some comparison between 2020 uh, America and Old Testament history, um, like some kind of typology that this is happening because this happened then and this is what judgment looks like now because of what was done then and you know that uh, what I am looking for and what I'm hoping to find and what I believe I do I will find is that God speaks and his voice can be heard in any generation at all times in the most adverse circumstances. And what is true of then Old Testament history and now uh, our own day and age is that there are adverse circumstances. We live in complicated times that, and, and, and any sort of divisions that we encounter are not these singular lines, but they are these fractures upon fractures this spider web of mess. And yet what I believe and is hopeful for us as a church is that God's voice can be found. And so I go back to this, this passage I just read and I read it again and, and I read it a third time and I read it maybe a fourth time and I reread it and I reread it and there it is. God's voice speaking to us, weaving its way through that entire passage is this, this issue of obedience. And I feel like the Lord is saying to me, and I'm just going to put this out there for you. I think maybe the Lord might be saying to all of us, you can take that or leave that uh, as you will. But I believe the Lord is saying to me, there's this issue of obedience out there. And obedience is not just about you. 
Your obedience and my obedience is not just about us. It's not, your obedience and my obedience is not just about our personal benefit in the end. Your obedience and my obedience is, is not just about our personal salvation. Now it certainly includes that. Your obedience and my obedience is not, is not simply our own personal pathway to heaven where God rescues us out of everything. And again, that's certainly included, but let's go, let's, let's go beyond that for a moment. Your obedience and my obedience is not just about our own uh, community, our own body, our own family, our own generation, but is about generations to come. Weaving its way through this passage we just read is this issue of obedience, that our obedience, your obedience, and my obedience is about keeping a lamp of faith burning for all generations. Isn't David here the one who did obey versus his son Solomon who didn't quite obey? Isn't, isn't David sort of the end result or at least the end result at this particular time of a promise given to Abraham that I will make of you Abraham, I will make of you Israel uh, to be a blessing for every other nation on the face of the earth, that you were created and you were formed and you were brought together and you were blessed so that you would be a blessing to every other person on the face of the earth. And right now when things seem so chaotic and it's very difficult to hear God's voice in the midst of noise and complication and divisions and factions, can we hold on to the issue and hold on to the command of obedience that obedience is much more or goes much farther than us obedience is about the generations to come obedience is about something much bigger and larger than ourselves our obedience your obedience and my obedience is about an internal eternal excuse me well an internal and an eternal lamp burning the lamp of the lord will not get snuffed out if we cling to the Lord when his voice is hard to hear and when things around us are so chaotic, that we commit to being obedient, holding fast to the commands and the statutes and the laws. Now, I'm not trying to preach to our church legalism, but I'm trying to give our church opportunity to hold fast to commitment. Obedient faith is much more about the commitment of love and that God loved his, his child, Israel, so much that he said, because of my servant's obedience, my name will be in her. And not the new Jerusalem of, that's across the globe, but the new Jerusalem that's in our hearts. Evergreen Church, this is quite doable. There's, there's some things that are outside of our control. But your obedience and my obedience and our collective commitment to obedient faith is doable. In fact, it's the only thing we've got. Now, I could say, well, that's a little bit strong or a little exaggerated, but I'm not going to say that because I think, I think that's all we've got. Jesus in the New Testament. Now, I, I, I gave you a passage from the Old Testament, but Jesus says... Uh, in the New Testament. In fact, he dedicates an entire chapter to it and you can go there, John chapter 15, you can go through it and go through it and go through it. And there is a strong, if ever there was a strong connection between love and obedience, it's Jesus's words, if you love me, you will obey my commands. And I think I hear an echo of that cascading backwards into the life of David. David was no perfect angel. His life in certain aspects was a train wreck, but he did not turn his face from the Lord and serve Ashtaroth. He didn't turn his face from the Lord and serve the God of the Moabites. He didn't turn himself inward and serve the God of David. He served Yahweh, the God of Israel. And he served Yahweh, the God of Israel, through obedient faith. At least that's what the scripture tells us. And I'm going to go with what the scripture tells us. The scripture is telling me, hold fast to the obedient faith because it's not just about you, Dan. It's about others around you and it's about the, the others who have not yet come. Evergreen Church, just want to encourage you with that. It's not to condemn you. It's not to beat you up and say you haven't been doing it well. It's to encourage you and strengthen your faith. 
It's to, it's to strengthen your faith. You know I love you, and you know this is doable. Listen for God's voice, and when it's hard to hear, you cling to what you know to be obedient faith. Well, I, I think that's a word for all of us. Amen. Uh, in fact, I know it is. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, when I hear Pastor Dan speak, he reminds me of my dad. And Dan, uh, it's one of the reasons I first wanted to minister with you is because I heard deep things. Mm. And so I'm just thankful. And I know our church is thankful that you are a leader yeah. and you're speaking into our lives. Obedience. Amen. How do we respond to that? It, I, I got from, there are many things from what Dan shared, but one, when you live in a chaotic time, mm -hmm. when everything feels fractured, uh, and even the voice of God might seem hard to hear, that this is the time to listen to what mm. God is saying in his word and what he said to our heart and to embrace obedience yeah. and that embracing obedience is doable. And in fact, it's the only thing we can do. We get to do it. and It's the only thing we can yeah. do. I've often said to people with fruit, like you can't judge the fruit of your life. You don't, you don't know the, you know, whether you, you do something and someone accepts it or rejects it. Ultimately, you have to stand before the Lord and say, was I obedient to what you called me to do? Mm. It's really the only thing you can assess yeah. in that sense. So how do we respond to this? Or how do you think it'd be best to respond to this? Honey? I think we should pray. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that the first thing that came to my mind is, wow, I want to press into this. Um, Dan used the word cling. I want to um, cling to the Lord and I want to be open to what God is asking from me, what does obedient faith look like? It's going to look like, you know, something different probably for each person. Um, but he also, he did start with it. It's a commitment to love and, you know, knowing how much the, the Lord loves us and how much the Lord loves his people. Um, I want to pray about what that looks like to walk out obedient faith in love. Mm -hmm. The other points you'd put there, big ones it's not just about us that obedience mm -hmm. is about the people around us and yeah. future generations and i've thought about this a lot in this specific time that i'm trying to do things that i will look back on when i'm mm. maybe i live to 70 or 80 i don't know where i can look back mm. and say i was obedient Amen. to you lord yeah. and that our obedience becomes a way for the kingdom of god to advance to the next generation and to mm. this present yeah. generation so uh, with that, we're going to pray. Uh, do you want to start? You want me yeah, to start? Yeah, yeah. I'll go ahead and, start. and you guys can pray as well. Ask the Lord to show as we're praying these things, you assess mm -hmm. them as well, and, and trust the Lord will speak. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just um, thank you that uh, God, that you spoke to Dan, Pastor Dan, and that you've spoken through Pastor Dan. And I just, um, I pray your blessing on him, even this morning, God, that you would continue to help him to press into these passages and press into this word. And um, you've planted it in his heart. And I just thank you that even as, as we spoke about something resonating and then radiating, um, that that's already resonating with, with Doug and myself. And I'm sure it's resonating with so many others. And so we do, we want to um, radiate your obedient faith, God. And I just personally, I want to know what that what that looks like, Lord. And I just thank you that you are faithful to us and that you are faithful to the generations and that as you lead each one of us as individuals, that it does have your, your word, your leading has um, eternal and generational effects, God. And I thank you for that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you would just open our hearts to be able to respond to what you're saying. If you're calling yes. us to a an area of just, we've been unwilling mm. to just, yeah, Lord, I know you, this is what you want me to do. Mm. This is what you want me to say. This is the attitude you want me to have, whatever that is. And that, Lord, we just stand before you and we say, we turn to you, Lord. The opposite of obedience is rebellion and repentance is turning in the direction of obedience. So we turn to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We turn to you. If we've been avoiding prayer we've been avoiding the scripture we've been avoiding just welcoming your mm -hmm. direction we repent and we turn to you yes we thank, thank you Jesus. that you're calling us to you thank because you. of your love for us lord thank you lord. lord as i listen to this i thought about this too that sometimes i think i'm being obedient but then i worry about justifying that obedience mm -hmm. to others or i talk about it in ways where i'm a double-minded man 
and I don't want to be a double-minded man. So if you've just called me to do something and I'm doing it based on you, I, I want to be at peace with that. Mm. And I pray that for others as well, where they're obedient, they're following you, they're doing the best they know how, but there's lots of condemnation from within or from without, or they feel like they have to justify their obedience. And Lord, we just stand before you. So I pray for those who are feeling weary in their obedience, that they would just trust that you are the one that matters, Lord. And so that's all that matters. Are we, are we truly seeking you with our hearts, pursuing you? Thank you, Are we trying to follow you and obey you as a good father? No, thank you, And then you defend it. You're the one who defends us. We don't have to defend it. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Specifically right now, I believe the Lord will show some of you an area where you've been disobedient. And again, this is as a father who loves you, whose discipline is not to harm or hurt you, but just to turn you towards life and light. But right now, what rises up, I want you to trust that the Holy Spirit could be showing that to you. Mm -hmm. So if there's an area, maybe it's relationally how you've been with a certain person or with yourself, mm -hmm. whether it's self-hate or hate towards other, I, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous even to say what it is because I don't want to direct where the Holy Spirit wants to direct mm -hmm. you. But just let the Lord show you that and just be obedient. Just turn. Don't wait. Yes. Don't justify. Don't defend. Don't hate thank yourself. Jesus. Don't hate others. Just thank the Lord and say, thank you for revealing this to me. Mm. I place this in your hands. I repent. I turn to you. Help me to walk in obedience. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Amen. 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 Uh, I'd love it if the Lord has spoken to you through this for you to intentionally respond either to Pastor Dan or myself or Jen in some way of responding. I'll put in the description an email, you can, my email, and if you want me to forward on to someone else, I will. But it, it's important for mm. us to know what's going on. We shared the things that are going on in our heart. Mm. It's important for us to hear from your heart. And uh, the best way that you could serve us, and you don't have to serve us, but you could serve us by you sending the email. Just pray. The Lord will just show you and you'll go, okay, I'm supposed to send that. And then you can send that because we need to encourage one another with what the good stuff that God is doing mm -hmm. in our lives. Mm -hmm. Hey, make room for the Lord. He knows you by name. He does. He, he knows does. you he by knows name. He knows you. So make room for him. Yeah. Make room for the Lord. He knows you by name. All right. Love you guys. Love you. Miss you. Come do what we're doing on Wednesdays is encouraging. Even yeah. if you can't watch it when we're doing it at seven, then watch it later. Mm -hmm. It's not going to hurt you. You're going to be encouraged by the spirit of the Lord. All right. See you. Bye.